welcome and thank you especially to Cecily for this wonderful performance. Um, it's the first time I've heard it aloud and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The Hymn to Zeus by Cleanthus is a truly remarkable poem. It combines various philosophical, religious and literary traditions into a unified composition that can be read on two levels, as a text conveying Stoic doctrine, but also as a religious hymn addressed to the Supreme Deity. On the one hand, the hymn uses traditional Homeric epithets for Zeus. It also refers to the God of Thunder's attributes, such as the thunderbolt by means of which he enforces his rule, or his ability to disperse the clouds. Zeus is the father from whom humans have their origin. The poem also makes use of literary allusions to Hesiod, Solon, and Heraclitus to underline Zeus's ability to make the crooked straight and to ensure justice. And to Orphic text about the wretched foolishness of the human race. These traditional elements can at the same time, however, be understood as metaphors. Zeus is not simply the supreme deity. Within Stoicism, Zeus represents the active principle of order and rationality, which permeates the whole of the cosmos. This two-edged fiery ever-living thunderbolt is a symbol of the designing fire, the principle of coherence and order. His ability to make the uneven even is a reference to the omnipotent divine order, despite appearances of chaos. His dispersal of the clouds is reason's ability to change ignorance into insight. Leanthus thus uses the familiar traditional form of a cult hymn to convey his message in a poetically beautiful garb. This approach should not surprise us. Leanthus believed that poetry was the most effective medium to communicate the truth, both because the discipline imposed by poetry concentrates meaning and because the musical element of poetry makes a greater impact on the recipient than pure prose. The poem is composed in hexameter verse customary for hymns. Its composition also has the tripartite structure typical of hymns, namely invocation, argument, and prayer. Leanthes, however, applies the compositional structure in a very pointed manner to accomplish his purpose. The invocation of an ancient hymn serves to address the relevant deity and to call upon him or her to pres be present and attend to the hymn. In Cleanthes' hymn, the invocation, verses 1 to 6, underlines both Zeus's position as ruler and the privileged position of human beings in nature because of their special relationship with God. This is also the reason why they may and should praise him. The argument forms the body of him. It indicates the reasons why the deity should assist or answer the prayer. In the hymn to Zeus, the argument as a whole focuses on the problem the bad people present to Zeus's universal rule. The first part of the argument verses 7 to 17, appears to continue the theme of praise with its description of the beautiful order Zeus creates throughout nature. At the end of this section, in verse 17, it becomes clear, however, that the positive, obedient response of nature to Zeus's rule is presented as a fall to the foolish people who act outside his plan. The actions for the bad people are described in more detail in the last section of the argument, verses 22 to 31. Blind to the fact that the good life may be obtained by adhering to God's law, they chase after mistaken goals in the hope that they will obtain happiness. 
only to end up in confusion and frustration. The first and last sections of the argument are therefore carefully counterpoised. The first contains a positive and optimistic description of the order prevailing in nature in obedient response to Zeus's rule, while the latter gives a gloomy and negative depiction of the fragmented and disorderly lives as a consequence of rejecting God's normative order. Acting as a hinge between these two sections, verses 18 to 21 suggest the solution to the disorder created by bad people. Zeus himself is able to restore order and to create unity in plurality. The pivotal role of this section is highlighted by its position at the exact center of them, flanked by the opposing first and last sections of the argument, which itself is framed by the invocation and prayer. The solution is, however, followed by the description of the dire consequences of the bad people's actions. The argument ends on the somber note that people are able to reject God's solution. This sets the scene for, for the prayer, verses 32 to 39, in which Zeus is requested to save humans from their ignorance and restore the order of his rule by granting them insight into how the universe is governed. This will enable them to join the rest of the cosmos in obeying and honoring Zeus's universal law, that is, living in accordance with nature, which Cleanthus describes as a life of praise, literally of taking part in a hymn. Cleanthus composed this hymn to Zeus as a thing of beauty to remind his audience of the divine order underlying all of nature and to request God's help to live according to this universal law of reason. Life itself is viewed as a hymn in praise of the divine in which all humans should participate. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Johan. How fascinating to, to hear your thoughts on the poem. Everyone, if you are in the chat and have a question, just pop your questions in the chat. Um, start that by just typing in question in capital letters so it's easy to kind of find your questions. Uh, we're going to hold on to Johan for a few minutes here just to ask any questions. And thank you for your applause emojis in the chat. Much appreciated. Um, Johan, I think it's absolutely fascinating that you've delved into this poem. And I do have just one, oh, a couple of questions maybe, unless anyone from the chat has any. But I was wondering um, why uh, the hymn to Zeus was composed in this way. So almost... Um, on two levels, as it seems, it's kind of a traditional hymn to Zeus, but it's also a philosophical text. So could you just elaborate a little bit more about that? Yes, we, we don't really know uh, for which occasion the hymn was composed, but it seems that it, it was pub probably for a public performance. And I think the accessibility of the hymn the fact that he uses very little, very few um, technical, stoic terminology would have made this poem accessible to um, ordinary people listening to it. In other words, non-stoics as well. And in this way, drawing them into, you know, stoicism. So it's a, it's a kind of um, advertisement for stoicism. I love that, well, which is quite interesting because I'd love, we've been talking a lot lately about having more creative work produced around Stoicism rather than strict sort of nonfiction texts. So do you think Stoicism, modern Stoicism should use poetry to advertise Stoicism? <laughs> well, if uh, the poet is good enough, um, if, <laughs> if you yeah. have a bad poet, the poetry itself can put people off. Absolutely true. I've got a couple of questions in the chat. I'll just see what Michael is saying there. So Michael says, I was surprised 
a bit by the section where he describes people who live life foolishly. It reminded me of some religious tribalism I'm familiar with personally. Do you see Cleanthes as creating a dichotomy of the foolish and the wise and therefore creating a kind of stoic versus non-stoic tribalism? Well, I'm not sure about tribalism, but of course, um, there was a difference between the sage, the wise person, and the person striving towards wisdom. Um, it, it's a big debate in Stoic scholarship whether anyone could ever become wise. But mm -hmm. what's interesting in this poem is that in the prayer at the end, the author um, identifies himself and his audience really with the foolish people who is in need of, of God's help. Um, so th th there is on the one hand this uh, distinction between wise people and foolish people, but on the other hand, we, we're all really on the road towards wisdom. That's such a lovely response. I love that. Okay, we've got another question. I think it's an interesting question. Terry in London says, how can praise be relevant? Praise. I think praise is, in a sense, a, a way of life. Mm -hmm. It's a praise in, in which you are thankful, you're grateful, uh, you're open to the universe, as it were. Um, thankful, grateful for what you have, which is you know, typical stoicism, not to complain about your situation. Um, and in that sense, it, it's a metaphor for, for living gratefully, living positively. Uh -huh. Ah, yes, interesting. Okay, um, one more question. This is from 017108. Question, which are the sources of this hymn and how has it reached us today? Yes, <clears throat> we only have one source for the hymn. And that is in the anthology of John of Stoby, uh, Johannes Tobias, uh, from late antiquity. He um, included this in his, his anthology, which was meant for his uh, the educa education for, of his son. It contains a lot of other texts, philosophical and um, literary texts. But this is the only reference we have to this. Poem. But mm -hmm. in the in the margin of uh, uh, Stubbe's uh, work, it says Cleanthes. So we know it's from Cleanthes. Lovely. Thank you. Um, Phil, if it's possible, I wouldn't mind bringing Cecily back to the stage with Johan. I do have a question to the actor. Um, I know that Cecily did a lot of, had a chat with Johan to prepare this and also did some study um, you dipped into the life of Cleanthes and as an actor, you were trying to ascertain what was his intention in this poem so that you could recite it as accurately as you, as you could. So I would love to know some thoughts on just your act, the process um, that it took to bring us, bring us the poem. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. It was a really interesting process. It was really interesting talking to Johan about it. Um, it's it was very different from working on a character you know as you might expect um for a play or something because you tend to be given quite a lot of background and obviously we don't really know that much about Cleanthes um but from what I did read I mean all of Johan's work um that I could read uh was my main source um from what from what I did read I sort of came to the conclusion that this was a man who really did believe in humanity um and I saw a comment in the chat about is this some sort of admittance to human evil and I actually think maybe it's the opposite um or at least that was the way I took it was that it was a Cleanthe is saying that humans might be inclined to be foolish but that with help with God's help with the help of stoicism um, which are obviously very intertwined, uh, they can be good if we show them the way. And he was, if to me, this was a desperate plea 
to help people be better because I think Cleanthes believed in humanity and he believed that we could be better. Um, and so that was kind of where I went with the poem was just to, was to give him the intention, give the poem the intention of, of really, really just pleading for humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.